The last style I'm going to talk about is uh, arguably probably one of the most popular. So you go from easily the least popular, free jazz, to one of the most popular, I mean right next to the big band era. Uh, jazz rock, sometimes it's referred to as fusion because it's a fusion of jazz and rock. But we start in the 70s to enter into the hyphenated jazz era because there is jazz folk. There's jazz bluegrass. They call it jazz grass sometimes. There's um, uh, jazz, you know, and hip hop later on, and pretty much jazz country. You know, you name it, it'll hyphenate itself and go on with other styles. In the 70s, we're talking specifically about jazz and rock, sort of uh, hooking up here. So there's uh, lots of electronic instruments, which is kind of obvious. When you look at a jazz rock fusion band, you're basically seeing. Um, uh, a band that looks a lot like a rock band. They're not going to have vocals very much, but uh, I'm going to see if uh, I have one that I usually play. I'm going to see if the YouTube is going to be a little bit better uh, visual quality. I've got to mess around with this because that's. It seems like the uh, the video you're getting is darker and darker. Pretty much, it's just going to be like you're just watching something in the dark here. So I'm going to see if I can get something off the YouTube. I have most of these bands down at the bottom. Return to Forever. Weather Report. Weather Report was really the cutting edge group in the 70s. They were sort of to uh, the fusion movement what the Beatles would be to rock in the 60s. You waited for their album to come out because what they were doing was uh, sort of the cutting edge of what was happening in that particular style. And Weather Report was a very popular band. That's another thing you notice here. These they start to get band names. So instead of these boring, usually in jazz you get Miles Davis Quintet. Uh, the Chick Corea Trio. You know, it's just the guy's name and then the number after however many people are in the group. But they start to emulate the rock kind of uh, mentality of having group names. So there was Mahavishnu Orchestra, and then later on you get uh, Rippingtons and Spyro Gyra, and uh, the whole bunch of Lifetime was uh, Tony Williams' band. What happens in 1969 is Miles Davis puts out an album called Bitches Brew which was done a lot like the rock albums at the time. It was done, it was done a lot like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and then later uh, a group called Steely Dan, which many of you are too young to remember who Steely Dan is, but Steely Dan was a band that really existed in the studio only. They never really traveled. They just made studio albums. And so the process of recording, um, the, the process of recording and the technology of using the studio, jazz musicians hadn't really thought of that before. Multi-tracking, overdubbing, Spot splicing and, and putting different cuts together. That's what they do in the rock world a lot of times. And you start to see that uh, with uh, the jazz rock fusion. Just like with rock bands, the rhythm section is really the, the fundamental part of the style. So uh, guitar players, uh, keyboard players. You'll also notice down here where I list the musicians, I'm not going to say pianist anymore or piano player. It's going to always say keyboards because they're playing synthesizers. They're playing the Hammond B3 organ. They're playing a Wurlitzer electric piano, Fender Rhodes electric piano. So they're playing a lot of keyboards, not a whole lot of acoustic piano. And uh, they, the, the electric instruments tend to dominate. You don't really get upright bass. You get the bass guitar, which you see in rock bands, you know, the electric bass. At first the four string and then later five, and then they have like six strings now, six string of electric basses. But uh, the, really, and even with the acoustic instruments, you'll get electric modifications. Like Miles Davis would play through a wah-wah like a pedal like a guitar player would. He'd play through a microphone that would distort his sound and you'd get uh, feedback or you'd get a chorus or you'd get a delay or an echo or something like that so that they can kind of uh, mix. The acoustic instruments, it was hard for them to mix with the electric. Saxophones are probably the most prominent. You don't really see trombones very much, hardly at all. Uh, and you see few trumpets, really other than Miles, and then later on with the more popular style of jazz, kind of a smooth style of jazz, you get guys like um, Chuck Mangione and Herb Alpert. Herb Alpert of Tijuana Brass fame, he had a bunch of smooth jazz recordings as well. So um, uh, we can, let's see, yeah, we can go back to the uh, classroom camera. So uh, with the, with the uh, jazz rock style, I think, I think these last two styles are kind of the easiest to identify. I will never play for you, although they do exist, uh, a free jazz style where they're using electric instruments. Ornette Coleman had a band called Primetime that used all electric instruments. And there's some of Miles Davis's stuff that really borders on that. But I'll play some of that for us to sort of, you know, practice. And, and I'll play some of the gray area music for us to debate. Like, what, do, what would you say this style is? And I've already done that with a couple classes. It works out pretty good because I get half the class says one thing. And it's interesting because each class is a little different. This morning I played the same piece and I had my 8 o'clock class largely say it was one style. 
in my 9 o'clock class said it was completely a different style. And the, both classes were right. They were both right, by the way, because it was really two different styles that were cohabitating the same space. That's the way this music really works in the real world. When you go out to listen to any live jazz and you go to the Pandora's things or the stuff we do on Thursdays at uh, Java or any of the live performances, it's really an amalgam of all these different styles. There's not just one style, and when a musician's playing, they're not going to go, oops, I can't go there because I'm just playing cool jazz now. You don't think that way. In fact, none of the musicians during those periods, especially bop, cool, and hard bop, they were all co you know, commingling and collaborating and crossing back and forth across boundaries. But for our purposes, I will always keep things very black and white, very neat and orderly, and very much in a pigeonhole. And uh, so for our listening, I will play real extreme versions of free jazz. And then if you hear any electric instruments, any synthesizers or electric guitars or anything like that, you'll know immediately it's jazz rock, it's fusion. And usually the recording quality is much better because we're in the 70s now. And so we've got much better recording techniques. And it, they're all on uh, long playing records at the time. And they've all been digitally enhanced now. So uh, what I'm going to use for the example, though, uh, is I'm going to go to my YouTube site. And the YouTube site at the very end has uh, several examples of all of these. When we get to the fusion era, they usually refer to them as the big three. And that would be Weather Report, Return to Forever, and uh, the Headhunters. So we can go to the computer now, Randall. So my YouTube site is youtube.com slash bjensenjazz. 